I remember when we drove from Wau to Torit. Something began to happen on the streets. We were told to step out of our car and lie on the ground. There was a shooting and I saw one of the rebels lying on the ground. The army beat him and then shot him. I remember, though I was very small at the time, how they pulled out a broad bean grain, some peas and a cross. A cross. I remember it all to this day. Sudan, one of Africa's biggest countries, has since regaining its independence from the British in 1956, experienced a history filled with exceptional drama. It was then that a pro-Islamic dictatorship came to power. The Sudan became entangled in two drawn-out civil wars. The underlying cause of these conflicts lay with the political and economic dominance of the North over the largely non-Arabic and non-Muslim South. The first war ended in 1972, the second flared up in 1983. Those 20 war years and the subsequent humanitarian disaster cost the country over two million lives and four million refugees forced to leave their homes. Large refugee camps were rapidly established on the periphery of Khartoum, where people were accommodated in cardboard, straw and sack housing. Sometimes entire families resided on only six square meters. With no secure water supply, abysmal hygiene conditions, no adequate food supply, no work, no privacy, very few thought about a luxury such as education. Apart from this, the overwhelming majority did not know classical Arabic, the teaching language in all the state schools in northern Sudan. The government would not accept our children. Schools from the south were not relocated, so that when we came here, education became a problem. Our children were saved when the church authorities opened schools. So the Archbishop at the time, moved by this situation, thought of opening some feeding centers, some kindergartens and some primary schools. It initially began from primary one to, to primary three to be able to educate these children other than staying there the whole day doing nothing. The main focus was to help the children of these displaced people. The government was not there to help these children. It was not opening schools for them. The church was practically at that time taking care of all the other needs of these people. Church organized schools became the only means of educating children and young people from refugee families as part of the Save the Savable program run by the Catholic Church. The Save the Savable program, uh, school program, uh, started back in 1986. It was started by His Eminence Cardinal Gabriel Zuberwako, who started it as a way of responding to the situation of many displaced people who are running from the south, from the east, and from the northern part of Sudan to the northern part of the country, mainly Khartoum. Their children were staying like that without school. Thanks to the financial support of charitable organizations like Aid to the Church in Need, the local church had the necessary financial resources that enabled it to set up and run schools. The first schools were established in church grounds built solely with refugee labor. The fact that parents did not have to pay for their children's education proved immensely important. We received our whole education at the archdiocesan schools. We did not have to pay any tuition fees. There was breakfast, and there was even free milk in the middle of the breaks. Exercise books were free, even writing pens. We wanted for nothing, even clothes were given away. The 
Church schools in the area we lived in were regarded as the best local schools, because in those days, in the 1980s, teachers there were better than in state schools. People were afraid of attending state schools because they thought they would receive a Muslim rather than a Christian upbringing, which is also why Christians sent their children to diocesan schools. Church schools also taught English. State schools did not place such a high value on teaching English as did the diocesan schools. Save the Savable had been established to avoid uh, the students to be Muslims when they are in secondary school. The program of Save the Savable, it had been uh, found to, to put the students in their uh, religion uh, from kindergarten up to university. That is the, the program that we are, we, are, we are working on. In the past time, the situation was very bad during the war. Uh, we have been hated as Christians here in the area. They used to attack us everywhere, even in the schools. We have our children who are Christians. They are also in the government schools there. In the government school, they don't have teachers to teach them Christianity. We tried our best as the Christian young community here in the church to participate our faith with these children. But that was very difficult. Because of the high education standard and alternative program, Catholic schools attained renown among students and their parents. Concerned by the thought of well-educated Christians, the authorities began closing Catholic schools on a mass scale.